In this video, we're going to take a look at trace tables. We're going to look at what we mean by a trace table, and then we're going to go through a worked example of how to complete a trace table. So what is a trace table? Well, a trace table is how we perform a dry run of an algorithm. Trace tables show how the variables change at each stage of the algorithm. Trace tables find the outputs for a given set of data to test if the flowchart or pseudocode gives the expected results. Trace tables help to check that your logic is correct and help you to find errors. Trace tables help to determine what a given algorithm has been designed to do, what it does. Using trace tables means there is less chance of making an error when performing your dry run as you're going to document the variables and the outputs at each step on the paper. Okay, so let's now practice a dry run of this algorithm. We have it represented here as a flowchart on the left hand side. On the right hand side we have our trace table. A trace table is just a table and across the top for our headings are the values that may change throughout this flowchart. So it's the name of our variables across the top. And we also have space to record any outputs that we may come across as we go along or certainly at the end. Here we can see a list of inputs. These will be given to you on the exam question. This is the data that's going to feed into the flowchart and we'll work our way through. So hopefully it'll all make sense as we go through this example together. So let's look at our flowchart then. We have our start symbol and then we get to our first process and we've got our neg variable that needs to be set to zero. So we're going to document what we do as we go along in the trace table. Our pos variable is being set to zero. We have a variable called zero, which is going to be set to zero. And we have a variable called count, which is going to be set to one. Okay, we follow those instructions. We've documented down any changes in the trace table. We move on. We're now going to input our first value, and that's going to be stored as a variable called number. So our first value is number two, and that's going to be stored as the variable called number. So number becomes two. Follow the flowchart through. Is number equal to zero? No, it's not. Is number less than zero? No, it's not. Is number greater than zero? Yes, it is. It's two. Two is greater than zero. We come to our next process. The pos variable equals itself plus an extra one. So it's currently zero. Zero plus one is one. Follow the flowchart through. The count variable equals itself plus one. So count is currently one. One plus one is two. We come to another decision here. Is count equal to eight? No, count is equal to two. So we follow the no line through and we're back to our input. So we move along and we work on inputting our next number and that's going to be stored as the number variable. So number becomes zero. Is our current value for number equal to zero? Yes, it is. So we look for the zero variable, which is this column here. And it's equal to itself plus one, but well, it's currently zero. Zero plus one is one. Follow the flowchart through. Our count variable equals itself plus one. So count was two. Add an extra one, it becomes three. Is count equal to eight? No, it's currently three. So round we go again to our next input. We move along. Our next input given to us is 15. So we're going to store the number 15 in the number variable record it down, that's the whole point of a trace table, so we can track what happens as we go along. Is our current value of number 0? No, it's 15. Is it less than 0? No, it's not a minus number. Is it greater than 0? Yes, 15 is greater than 0, so we come along to our next action. Our pos variable equals its previous value with an extra 1. So pos is 1 plus 1, pos becomes 2. Count equals its previous value plus an extra 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. Is count equal to 8? No, it's not. Round we go again. On to our next input. Our next input is minus 11. So our number variable is now going to contain a new value of minus 11. 
Is our current value of number 0? No, it's minus 11. Is it less than 0? Yes, we have a minus number. So our next action we're being told to do is we're going to assign neg the value of itself plus 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1. Count is going to be itself plus 1. So count 4 plus 1 is 5. Is count equal to 8? No, it's 5. Round we go again. On to our next input. We're on to another 0 now. So our latest value of number is 0. Is number equal to 0? Yes, it is. 0 equals its previous value itself plus 1. So 0. It was 1. Add an extra 1. That now becomes a 2. Count equals itself plus 1. So count 5 plus 1 is 6. Is count equal to 8? No, it's 6. On to our next input. Our next input is minus 2. Hopefully we get the idea of what's happening here. Minus 2 gets stored as number. There we go. Is our latest value of number 0? No, it's minus 2. Is our latest value of number less than 0? Yes, it's minus 2. So look at the neg variable. It equals whatever it was before plus an extra 1. Before it was 1. So plus an extra 1 to 1 is 2. Count equals its previous value, its current value, plus 1. So we're up to 6. Add an extra 1, it's 7. Is count equal to 8? No, it's not. Round we go over again. We come to another input, number 72. So number 72 gets assigned into a number variable. Is equal to 0? No, 72 is not 0. Is it less than 0? No, 72 is positive. Is it greater than 0? Yes, 72 is greater than 0. So we go to our next value on our trace table. Pos is pos plus 1. So our previous value of pos was 2 plus an extra 1 is 3. Count increases by 1. Is count equal to 8? Yes, it is. So we go down here. We're going to output some values. Going to output 0, neg, and pos. So we're going to look what is the last value for 0. If we look at the 0 column, our last value that we had stored as 0 was 2. So we're going to put a 2. Then we're going to output the neg variable. So if we go to neg, our neg variable, the latest value was a 2. And we're going to output the contents of our pos variable. Well, our pos variable, the last value recorded in there was a number 3. And that's our answer. So by now we should have realized what this trace table and flowchart is doing. This algorithm is uh, recording how many positive, negative, and zero numbers we have out of a list of inputs. And we're saying that we had two zero numbers in our list. And we did have two zero numbers. We're saying we had two negative numbers. Is that right? A minus two, minus 11. Yeah. And we've said there should be three positive numbers in our list. 72, 15, and 2. So I believe this flowchart is fit for purpose. And the trace table has helped us identify that. Now, a few things to look out for. First of all, there is some empty rows on this trace table. That's not unheard of. For you to have empty rows. Don't panic on an exam question if you've got empty rows there. I would be concerned if you need extra rows, but don't be worried if you have surplus rows that you don't need. The other thing to note is don't fill in these gaps. Okay, Don't fill in the gaps. Only record when a variable changes its value. You don't need to, don't backtrace in and start adding like 2, 2 before the 3. Don't add extra numbers in because that's sort of maybe indicating at that point the number was reassigned or changed. It wasn't. Nothing happened at that point. So just leave it empty. Um, don't be tempted to get ahead of yourself. So what I mean by that is don't think, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see what's happening here. I know what this uh, flowchart does. I, I can see what's happening with this trace table. I'm just going to now bang in all these numbers, put them all in. Um, I can see the pattern here. Don't do that. Just follow 
the flowchart or the pseudocode through to its completion because I also wouldn't be surprised, let's say you get given 10 input values to put in to the flowchart, don't be surprised if the last two or three values actually never get to be entered into the flowchart because by that point it's already finished and ended and you've been told to output a value and it's over. That might be to try and catch you out, so don't go ahead of yourself putting numbers in thinking you've spotted the pattern because just because you're given all these values doesn't mean all of them will actually get to be entered into the flowchart. The flowchart may end before that is necessary, so don't be caught out by that. And one last thing is your flowcharts and your pseudocode may be much more complicated than this, um, so make sure you're still using what you've learned in maths as the um, order of operation, your bod mass, etc. So make sure calculations are performed in the right math mathematical order as it would if it was um, a piece of math you're working out. Okay, so that's a trace table. It's a dry run to express how values change in a flowchart or pseudocode in an algorithm to help us to um, check that the algorithm is logical, it's working, and it's correct.